as with any design it's a good idea to have a look to see what's on the market at the moment and we've got here a little look through in uh, real photographs from uh, botanical gardens and online examples of current uh, nesting boxes see there's quite a wide variety some are actually feeding boxes some are nesting boxes so we're going to take this fairly tight little design and the idea we're going to work with a, a house based a pitched roofed type design uh, I'm looking at ways of reducing possible amount of materials of the construction to make it reasonably environmentally friendly and to give it a unique design, certainly something we've not seen so far. We're going to stick with the idea of a, uh, a basic house shape. You can see this being built up with the sketching uh, techniques, the outlining techniques and a little bit of rendering later on. And um, we've got some 2D and 3D sketching just to build up this concept, this idea of the, the house, something we've probably sketched before. Hold the size and position of which we'll look at a bit more detail later on. And this is it shown with the roof removed to show the, the basic construction. What we have here, in essence, and we will speed this up quite a bit throughout the video, so don't worry, it won't last the full nearly two, uh, one and a quarter hours, three quarter hours it took to, to produce this work. So we have a front and back which are very similar. We have sides which will be this almost identical and a base. Um, we'd also have material for a roof of some sort and a base that would fit underneath. The roof itself at 90 degrees is the simplest construction and so I think we'll probably try and stick with to keep the, the, the construction as simple as possible. We can look now at uh, proportion. So we're looking at the uh, same idea with a uh, tall, wide, narrow, a variety of different rectangular proportions and possible different bases from the sloping or chamfered or curved bases. Um, we can set as things that look tall in terms of house shapes, the position and size of the hole, again more detail to be added but just to give the indication there would be a hole somewhere on them. So we've got this idea of two sloping sides um, for the roof for sure um, but in design number number three uh, what we have there is an example of a curve, so we've got fewer pieces. Uh, and the sloping bases would take any debris away from the nest. We maybe take parasites or, or uh, we we'll just call it bird poo, possibility. Other materials away from the nest itself. So having a, a non-flat bottom is something. But definitely having a look at um, experts on this, and for sure the RSPB, the Royal Society for Texture Birds, would be one such place. We're going to look at now a way of uh, generating ideas very quickly. Now we're going to look at possibly five different combinations for something as simple as one of those types of house shapes on the left hand side. The first being uh, a method of constructing that right angled roof structure. The second being the end shape of the roof from right angled, 45 degree, rounded, chamfered, combinations of the two. Even something with a little groove in here that would stop water tracking back as it ran off the roof. It's called an anti-capillary groove. Little bit of science there, boys and girls. Um, so the first one at the moment was really the pitch and how we join that from either a butt joint or a mitre or a rebate housing or just bending a material to get that right angle bend. Um, second being ways of uh, finishing the end. And that makes a big visual difference uh, to, to the structure itself. Uh, then, of course, we can think of, um, well, the material we're going to use for the, the roof. Um, in terms just at the moment not of the physical material but the thickness we've got some thicker thinner sheet material and this example we put together very quickly takes the top idea of a mitre and um, the second row taking this 45 degree cut at the bottom and using the same thickness as the box so taking points one two and three would give us a possibility of a roof structure something like that using the choices made above for this potential roof structure. I think by making those three choices you might have sussed that we could actually take different combinations of those things. So we could have taken for example the rebate joint on the top and the rounded roof and the thicker material. The combination of those three would give a completely different roof, uh, visually looking uh, roof structure. So this idea of mixing things from choices gives us a, a way of generating a whole range of possibilities. Remember that 90 degree is the easiest uh, corner to make. Other angles can be done, but would involve maybe possible jigs or slightly different construction. So we're keeping it as simple as we can and as a sort of um, unalterable fact for this one, 90 degree sloping roof, whether it's pitched in the centre or off to one side, we'll maybe look at that later on. So um, 
we're going to look at now some of the so primary focus of this thing. Just really, we've said it's going to be a bird box. Now, a bird box, maybe better term would be a nest box, but for nesting, a bird box. But the, the structure itself might have some other spin offs. It, it could be, as we saw in some of those early photographs, uh, a bird feeder, um, an insect shelter, or e even for feeding squirrels. So down the bottom here, we're taking the, the concept of the rounded base and we're playing about with the proportion of that. Look at the ratio of two squares high, one by one and a half squares, and one that's a square, one by one. And by playing about with the, the different uh, roof thicknesses on top of that, and the, the curving idea, we get the potential here of having uh, a front and a back, which are very similar, but one piece rather than three pieces for the body, having an arch, an inverted arch, uh, held in place. Held in with a possible little uh, piece at the back that it connects up with, so checking whether gluing or screwing would be the most appropriate way of uh, constructing this. The, the the page itself has grown organically. There's a lot of information here. Maybe a bit of space to put something about the hole sizes. Those hole sizes will be dependent upon the type of bird that's going to use it. And we have to do some research to find out what the appropriate sizes would be. So Again, if we if we take this idea of a mix, um, let me just draw some numbers there. So rows one, two, three, the holes would be four, and the the proportion would be five. That any combination of one something from line one, something from line two, line three, line four, and line five would give us a completely different design. We've also got to think about materials and construction. But for, as far as materials are concerned at the moment, we're just putting color in to identify the 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 depth in this two-dimensional drawing. So little shadows going in to show uh, overhangs or holes and and to build up uh, a, a visual link. For example, the yellow and blue things on the left-hand side showing that we're really just playing about with proportion. The roofs, all the same colour, just to show that it's the thickness we're changing or the angle we're changing. It's the same material, same thing. And if we move on to taking this idea of a one by one and a half tall box at the moment it's an arbitrary decision that it can be changed and look at the idea of maybe holding somehow holding uh the curved piece the arch piece in place so a little sketch here showing the the roof to stop it from wobbling about and we don't want a roof that's stuck down we want to be able to get access at specific times not not all the time uh, to take the roof off maybe a little block underneath to locate that in place and something similar on the back of these arch shaped fronts uh, maybe an arch within an arch, uh, whether that's made by gluing two pieces together or machining uh, a groove around the edge to take or to accommodate that bent piece of material, whether it's plywood or rubber or some other bent material that's fitting in there. The idea that the nest would sit on top, um, the chicks sitting inside there, the possibility of a hole at the bottom to allow maybe moisture out, whether it's plugged or not, I'm not entirely sure about that at the moment, we put a plug in the hole, and it's a little chance to try perspective sketching uh, of an object above us, the bird box in this case would be above the viewer, so we're looking at the idea of vanishing points as before, but the, the leading edge being above eye level, everything heading down towards the vanishing points. So we've got to look at details of the specification to confirm, so we've got to look at materials, we've got to look at the depth of the material, we've got to look at the joining methods involved, so we've got some research to do on all of that, and that might appear fairly quickly. Uh, the environment's got to have uh, as little impact as possible on the, on the environment and be safe for the birds to live in. This is a little bit of research done online, um, you can see I've still got the recording uh, going past, it's uh, two or three pages looking at websites um, with information specific to materials and to uh, hole sizes and the types of birds that might live in there. The result of all that, you can see the page is filled up quite a bit more. As I was saying that the, the hole, for example, should be a minimum of 125 uh, down to the base of the object. We've got information on brackets for holding it in the wall, sizes of the holes for birds. Um, the possible widths of material to, to, to fit this thing together. So a lot of information has gone on this page and we're just visually linking these things together with a wee touch of colour. So we thought about predators, we thought about bird sizes, about cleaning, we looked at joining methods, we looked at uh, suitable materials and finishes within this part. So all the research that was done earlier on in that written work has uh, been transferred now into the folio. For example, a grill at the bottom to keep the nest off the bottom. and. Uh, 
there's a basic concept which is still to be taken further. We're now going to look at this idea of having a, a little bit of fun, the potential for having a little bit of fun, uh, using this uh, house idea that should help sell the product but not distract from the bird-centered focus of the function. So this little bit of fun page is building up ideas of houses with roofs and the bird idea. We've got buildings behind, we've got rockets coming at the bottom, wings, bird wings, bat wings, plane wings, feet, triangular looking things, clouds, rainbows, anything associated with or come to mind with this idea of house as we're sketching down. This is speeded up quite a lot, and the idea at the moment is just to generate as many possibilities. Whether these are taken forward or not, they're just simply giving potential for a little bit of fun within this function of a bird box. These may be ignored, but at the moment, we're just looking at some possibilities. Slow the video down, have a look at them at a slower speed. But in, in recap, we've got one page, look at the concept of the bird idea. The second one, which is incomplete at the moment, is the looking at the detail. Uh, how it might go together, and three, adding a little bit of func function. So the function, still hold the bird, you decide which type of bird, where it's going to be used, and looking back over the design, you can pick any of those earlier five or six different combinations from that morphological analysis and take this design in your own direction.